Dr. Mark Jangizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about the analogies that people are making with this kind of COVID hysteria and these kinds of draconian interventions that have been going on for the last 19 months. And people are analogizing that to Nazi Germany. Now, let me try to give you an, an analogy first. And imagine that you are in communist China, or pre-communist China, during the communist revolution, and you're middle class, or you're, I don't know whether you're one of the people that were discriminated against or not, but just imagine um, you are, uh, let's say you're middle class, upper middle class educated, and folks are coming after you, right? They want to take you down because you're the enemy of the state. You're unclean. Your education and your class and your wealth and your position as, you know, within, as a bourgeoisie, you know, whatever, remember, makes you an enemy of the people. Now, you might at the time, because you uh, knew, uh, uh, you know, a history of, of World War II, and you say, look, this, you guys are acting like Nazis. And imagine they said, no, we're not racist against you. We're not angry at you because of your ethnicity. So that's just totally not a good analogy. Like, no, of course, if they were to say that, and I'm sure some did in, in terms of watching the events that killed 30 million people in, in China, um, watching those events, they would have seen the analogies, the kind of mass hysteria that goes through and the creation of this kind of narrative where there's these enemies of the people who are the deeply unclean folks, and they can be even asymptomatic, you could be hiding the fact that you, in fact, were educated or friends or, you know, of somebody who was upper middle class. All of these kinds of hidden wealths are, are asymptomatic, not visible. But if it's found out, you're an enemy. Right? Now, those analogies were right. Now, of course, it wasn't about race. It's about class. And in Iran, where my family comes from, imagine that you're a woman who's on the street. And if you're a little bit of your hair lock is showing, you say, you know, like people are complaining about this. This is this is, this is crazy. This is happening in the 1980s when it started to happen after the the, uh, the revolution, and suddenly pe women who are just completely Western dressed. If you look at let's say just the the pictures of the graduating law class in 1975 compared to 1985, it just goes from people that look like they're in the West uh, with Western dress and very just beautiful and 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 just Western outfits, uh, 70s outfits, and but to you know mid 80s and suddenly they're in shadows and covered completely up. And people who are discussing these sorts of events that would, went on there would have compared them to potentially other kinds of events like that, like in, uh, during the communist revolution and other kinds of places in the world as well as the Nazis. And someone could say no. Well, we're not discriminating against you on the basis of your class or your race, so it's totally not like the Nazis, totally not like, no, yeah, now you're discriminating on the basis of dress, on the basis of religious conformity, and, you know, and, and things like this. It is different in the details, but the underlying phenomena are the same. We see the same kinds of events that are going on here, and it hit hard last March when it happened. As I have mentioned before, you know, even as of March 15th, my CrossFit crowd was just working out in the park, social distancing outside of the... Still, you know, one of these Karens pulled over and attacked us, verbally attacked us. We're killing people. You're killing people. We had to pick up all of our stuff and run across the field to get away from her. Totalitarianism is built out of millions of individuals like that who have righteous indignation and they believe that, you, that there's these unclean folks who are the ones who are wrecking it for society. They're the scapegoats. This happens in all of these things. These psycho-societal forces are the same. It's what we're trying to understand at FreeX, this research institute by Dr. Tim Barber and myself. We're trying to understand exactly these kinds of psycho-societal forces that underlie mass hysteria. They underlie free expression, why it's so important, how it works in a normal society, so that it can sort of move toward the truth and hopefully avoid these kinds of uh, sick narratives, which create a sickness in society. The reason that we remember the Holocaust is... Sure, one, to remember the, you know, the individuals who lost their lives. Of course, none of us remember those individuals anymore. It's a very small fraction left who actually remember any of those people. But the real reason that we remember the Holocaust, that we say remember it, is so that we can avoid those sorts of events again. But the way that we can avoid them is only by understanding the fundamental principles that drove it. And the fundamental principles that drove it didn't concern per se hatred of an ethnicity. It didn't concern, per se, hatred of a class or hatred of a particular religion. Of course, you know, all of these things get mixed in together. It wasn't about that, per se. It's about these complex narratives that start to move, and then you have righteous... You know, all of these kinds of stories are psycho-societal physics. It's the physics of these large social networks. That's what the same. That's what is the same. No one is accusing you of being racist or being anti-class or being... Anti it's not that. It's these other kinds of forces, and you need to 
sit back and realize that and not be so defensive uh, that, oh, no, I'm not a racist, so I can't possibly be involved in encouraging, total encouraging totalitarianism. No, we all are encouraging totalitarianism, and we were as soon as we started labeling people deniers for not agreeing that it was as dangerous as they kept saying that it was. You're deniers if you think that you should consider that there's costs, not just benefits. You're deniers if you're not completely on board and show sufficient zeal for this cult kind of view of COVID. Once that happened, we already went down this path and we're already there. Purges have already happened. If you're not on board with this and show sufficient zeal, you can't get into places, you can't get into restaurants, you can't go shopping in many parts of the world now. You have been purged from society. If you don't see parallels to these other kinds of great wrongs that occurred, then there was no point in remembering the Holocaust at all. And that was your science moment.